Hello, everyone. My name is Jane Zhang. I am the founder and CEO of Remy, of Remy Health. We are a healthcare technology company that developed the FDA registered ear, nose, and throat connected monitor for family healthcare. We design our telemedicine enabling app and connected monitor to empower parents to track and evaluate their children's ear, nose, and throat symptoms safely at home. Um, we're based in Seattle, so very much uh, honored to have this session here. I invited one of our pediatric consultants, Dr. Stella Evans, to discuss how to best prepare for a telemedicine visit for your child. Um, Dr. E Evans, how are you today? Thank you for your time with us. Uh, would you please introduce yourself to the audience first? Hi, Jane. Hi, everyone. I'm Stella Evans. I am a pediatrician in Minneapolis, Minnesota. And I have been in this line of work for 18 years now. Oh my goodness. It doesn't seem that long sometimes. Uh, thank you for inviting me. I hope you're doing well today. Yeah, I, we're very excited and looking forward to that, uh, the school op reopening. And we very much wanted to provide the parents the important critical healthcare related information that they should all have in, in, in mind. Um, so we do, we do have a, um, a few questions that I like to jump into, uh, and, uh, we can, you know, to, to help the parents to best prepare, for example, a virtual visit, a telemedicine visit for their child. Um, the first question is when, uh, children get, uh, ear infections and other, you know, even for COVID like symptoms, um, mostly in the winter time, or, you know, as you mentioned, it might not be seasonal, you know, all year round. What would you say parents can do to reduce the risk of getting the infection? And what should they do when it comes to their kids? That is such a great question. So people who have more than one child will probably have already noticed that children that go to school or preschool tend to have more of what we call upper respiratory or cold and viral symptoms during the winter. Runny nose, cough, fever, and ear pain. And the reason for that is in places where it's not nice all the time outside, we as human beings tend to stay inside. And when we're inside, where the ventilation isn't as good, we tend to share more germs. When we share more germs, we catch more viruses. And unfortunately, one of the major sources of ear infections are viruses. It can be very difficult for pediatricians to tell and for family practice doctors to tell whether an ear infection is caused by a virus or a bacteria in any age of child. So oftentimes we simply will say, this is an ear infection. Now, there are some things that parents can do to reduce the risk of their children getting an ear infection when their children have congestion and cold symptoms. So the controllable things that parents can do are not allowing their children to lie on their backs and drink sugar-containing drinks. And that would include milk because milk contains sugar. Because when you lie on your back and drink a drink, that drink can actually get into the tubes that drain the ear and then into the ear itself, along with bacteria that like to eat the sugars. And of course, then you can get an infection. Another thing that seems to be a risk factor for ear infections is exposure to secondhand smoke. So for children who are exposed to tobacco smoke, it's smart for parents who do use cigarettes to not smoke in the car or to wear a smoking jacket and to take that off immediately and wash their hands and face when they come inside before picking up their child. If your child is going to a preschool where there are large numbers of children that are having infections, it might be time to begin to think, especially if your child is having large numbers of infections and your physician is getting concerned maybe I should look at a different environment, a different type of preschool for my child. 
Remember, the more people in an environment, the more germs there are to share. And children are not great at physical distancing at the preschool age. It simply is not something that is automatic to them. And they're not as careful about it as adults, no matter what the rules are. They want to follow the rules, but they're still learning the rules. And so we have to give them grace and the right environment to thrive in. Yeah, thank you, doctor. That's a great advice. And, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the part about the risk factors, I'm sure, are going to be very valuable for a lot of parents. Um, so what in what circumstances can parents take their children to a virtual doctor, you know, instead of coming in in person, you know, can you share the must know checklists for a virtual doctor list uh, visit, visit so that they're best prepared for such a visit? That is another great question. So for a virtual visit, I like to ask the following things. I like to ask that patients be at home and not driving or out at someone else's house. I like to ask that uh, they be ready for the visit. That is to say, at the time of the visit, they be with whatever type of technology that they're going to have the visit on, whether that's their phone, their tablet, or their computer, and that they've checked to make sure they have sufficient battery life, or that the speakers work, or that they have the right kind of browser. Um, I also ask that the patient be there. So if you're having a visit for your child because your child has a stomach ache and your child isn't there, that actually can be a problem for your doctor. Uh, we, we definitely want your child to be there, not at the preschool. So please make sure that your child is at least in the house where you can go and retrieve him or her. Um, as far as other things you can do to prepare, if you have a list of questions that you would like to have answered, it's okay to write those down somewhere. In fact, if you're using your computer or your tablet to do your visit and you can do a split screen, you can sometimes have whatever application you're using for your visit up on one side of the screen and your questions on the other side of the screen. And that can work really beautifully. Also, it's good to know that if you are having a visit for a rash or some other visual item, my child has some stuff coming out of their eye. My child has a cut. Can you take a look at it? There is an unusual rash, as I mentioned before. Taking a picture of that can be really critical and getting a good picture that isn't blurry, if at all possible. And I realize that at this age, a child almost has to be sleeping for you to get a good picture um, and sending that ahead of time so that you can talk about it with your doctor is really really important as far as what kind of visits are appropriate i would say that if you have ever been to one of the little clinics that is co-located in a cvs or a walgreens or like a bartell drug any of those types of visits would be very appropriate if, for instance, you're concerned about strep throat, you can certainly have that visit and your doctor can then write instructions and you can make a quick stop at the clinic and be tested for strep throat. If you're concerned about a bladder infection, you can do the same thing. In addition, if you're concerned about behavior issues, which would not be something that I would stop at a clinic attached to a Bartel drug for, you can actually do that over a video visit and that can work very well. While your child has to be in the house, they don't necessarily have to be listening to you talk about it the same way they would if you were doing a face-to-face -face visit with your physician in the office and they were stuck in that tiny little patient room listening to you detail all of the things about their behavior you're concerned about. That's wonderful. Thank you. I, I, I really appreciate um, th that you're, you're sharing that list of checking, you know, checking lists for a good visit and, uh, making sure that they are prepared for these visits to get the most out of them. Would you have any recommendations in terms of, um, you, know, you know, just linking to our products, for example, you know, Remy is an ear, nose and throat monitor. Um, do you think there's any way that Remy could help improve, you know, family healthcare through telemedicine? Um, oh, both hands, you know, supporting both the families and the, the, the clinicians. 
Absolutely. You know, the lovely thing about a visit for ear pain is that it is so quick and it can be so easy. And yet as a parent, because I'm, I'm also a parent and my youngest had ear tubes quite early at seven months of age. So I, I also know what it's like to sit there and be like, well, so my kid has been screaming in pain and now I have to wait another five hours for an appointment. And then however long it's going to take to get roomed and however long it's going to take for the doctor to get in here, only for them to take four minutes to say, yep, there is an ear infection and to prescribe me some antibiotics. So there's all this unnecessary delay. And so this, these, this product can shorten all of that time. And so particularly during times like these, when we're saying, look, the, the smartest thing to do for everyone is to minimize exposure, to maintain physical distancing, to wash hands frequently, to wear your mask, we're, we're, this, this product can avoid having you bring your preschooler who may not mask consistently, might enjoy splashing in the water, but probably acts like their fingers are going to melt off when you apply soap and does not really understand the concept of physical distancing super well um, into a clinic for however long it takes for the physician to get to them. Um, simply, you can simply take a picture of the ear and this is wonderful, especially for children who have had repeated issues with ear infections, whose parents really have this understanding. Nobody knows their child like a parent. I mean, you can tell when your child is going through the early stages of an ear infection. You just know when they're coming down with something because the way they act is different. And you can look every day if you want to, because you're not paying $15 copay every time to look. You know, or if you have a high deductible healthcare plan, you're not paying for the whole visit every time. So you can look every day. And when you, when you have a picture that shows changes, you can be like, yes, I'm sending it. Here it is. So this is a game changer for the parents. It really is. So Remy has all sorts of applications. And again, I mean, this is one of those things where we don't want to be using antibiotics when we don't have to. We don't want to treat things that we shouldn't be treating. We don't want to give children diarrhea we don't want to spark allergic reactions. We don't want kids to have itchy rashes when they don't have to. So in March, when we're saying, well, you know, they have ear pain, we, we don't know. We can either bring them into the office or we can just throw antibiotics at them. I mean, that was the right thing to do then, but we have this tool now and it's amazing. Why wouldn't we use it? Thank you. Yeah, thank you for sharing that. Uh, you know, that's, that's absolutely important for parents understand there are, there are options for them, you know, other than taking the kids in for the ER visit or even in person. There's no doubt that uh, telemedicine is getting more widespread and becoming a, a common alternative to an in-person appointment with doctors. And we're, we're seeing the, the future with that as well. So, um, you know, hopefully that would really facilitate, you know, better health care for the families, um, you know, much better access uh, to healthcare resources. Uh, I hope that we, our, our discussion today could help parents to better understand about telemedicine in general and help them better take care of their children through um, telemedicine, virtual care, or um, remote screening. So um, for, for more information, we're having our booth in the resource fair. Um, so uh, this is for the parents. Uh, feel free to check it out and you may directly speak to us by clicking the chat now button in the booth. Um, if you want more information and want us to contact you in the near future, please click the request information button in the booth. You may also visit our website at uh, uh, http dot, uh, slash, uh, comma slash slash remyhealth.com if you have any questions um, with us or our telemedicine services. Thank you so much, um, Dr. Evans, for your time today. Um, I, uh, I'm gonna end my, my recording here.